Record. Hey guys. Uh, today is uh, May 7th, 2017. And uh, I'd like to cover very quickly the scope of work uh, or techniques uh, which I utilize in my workshop. I'm going to create a matrix. There are five categories, and I want to create uh, a row describing the materials. Generally, that each process deals with. Um, tools, techniques, okay? And um, let's start with that. Let's see where this goes. Five categories. There is casting. There is the subtractive processes. There are the additive. There is the forming. And welding. So this, you could, when referring to weld, um, Metals, this category would be termed fabrication. Okay, so we could say fab for short. And then the fifth category is very broad and actually impacts all the other categories. It is, so I will designate it with a circle because it's a special category and I call this the digital Pipeline. Okay. Materials of casting. Metal. Like the ancient Cre Greeks were cast with bronze. Um, and the other materials that I deal with. Um, plaster. and polymers. Namely, polyurethane polymers. So two-part polyurethane, uh, typically with the resin and the catalyst, and some kind of a uh, silicone mold or a polyurethane mold. Um, so let's talk about the tools and techniques of casting. Well, that's a broad topic, but uh, generally speaking, that involves, when you talk about metal, you have a broad category of foundry work, okay? Which involves burnout kiln, a furnace, crucible, um, and a whole host of tools that go along with melting metal, creating a refractory, pouring it in, casting it, and creating a finished product. When it comes to polymers, um, so I'll put metal here, okay? Um, and then when it comes to plaster, typically plaster is was used a lot in um, the 19th century, for instance, um, in the French academies, um, as a lower cost alternative to the more expensive um, marble or um, bronze castings. Um, so typically students would work with plaster. And when you work with plaster of Paris, uh, your molds are um, made of plaster as well. Okay.
but it could also be clay molds. Okay. Um, when you're talking about polymers, polymers, um, you're dealing with polyurethane. So two-part catalyst and polymer resin. Um, you can also use silicone nodes. Um, when you're doing foundry work, at least the type of foundry work that I'll most likely be working, dealing with here, it will, the refractory will be plastic. Okay, so that is generally casting. In the subtractive category, um, generally speaking, we have the mat materials we're dealing with, the metal, and wood, and stone. The tools will be hand tools. Not really applicable. Well, hand tools actually are used on metal as well. So, hand tools are probably the first tool that um, you should master <laughs> with the subtractive techniques. Um, and then there is the numerically controlled processes, or CNC, which involves some sort of a milling machine or lathe, and the um, material is mechanically removed from the materials, okay? Tools and techniques, um, <clears throat> so I described the tools. The techniques, um, are very broad and each category of material requires its own um, deep understanding of the properties of the material. Um, when you're talking about each of these materials vary widely in their properties depending on the species or the, in the case of metals, the type of alloys type of metals. Um, so broadly speaking, uh, a metal is, in chemistry, is a particular category of elements in the periodic table. Generally though, when you're working with metals in a shop, they will be alloyed commercially. Uh, they'll be commercially available alloys. And they have very specific designations and properties, which are um, widely um, published in for um, industrial use and um, when it comes to wood uh, that is a whole science in and of itself in terms of understanding the properties of each species um, also the conditions in which the wood the tree grew uh, will vary the properties of wood considerably in the case of stone, historically, the materials that have been used in sculpture um, would be marble and granite. And uh, there are some other softer stones like sandstone that have been used. But I would say marble is by far the most, um, most uh, widely used medium for uh, sculpture. Okay, in the additive category, um, we have clay. And generally speaking, when I say clay, um, this can be either fired or not, okay? In which case, 
if you don't fire clay, it it will it, it will expire. It will disintegrate. It will eventually um, break and crumble. So if it's not fired, then generally it needs to be molded. And then put into some kind of a more permanent form. Um, and then there is um, the other additive processes that I will be working with. Um, you could, there is a category of welding, which you could consider welding as an additive process. Uh, and the way that I have used the MIG welder in particular, and to some degree the TIG welder, although the TIG I use quite a bit for blending uh, the metals um, more than for forming, for adding, but for the MIG welder I use quite a bit as a as a method of additively forming metal form, okay? So we'll put, we'll put MIG welding as a maybe. But the other categories involve um, 3D printing in particular. So I'm going to put um, FDM filament. and stereolithography resin. Okay? Now, FDM filaments and STL resins are in quite a bit of, there's a quite a bit of R&D going on currently in developing uh, materials with different properties. Um, so this is a very actively researched area because of the proliferation of 3D printers. So obviously, in terms of tools um, and techniques, here we're talking about, with 3D printing, we're talking about 3D printers. <coughs> Generally speaking, there's the uh, FDM and the stereolithography printers. I will be using the Form 2, which is made by a company called Formlabs. The FDM printers, I have several. Um, actually, I have quite a few of, uh, quite a few FDM printers, and I, one of the things that I will be discussing is um, how to build, custom build, and custom modify FDM printers to suit uh, sculptors' needs. Uh, obviously with clay, when you're dealing with clay, you got your hands. <laughs> That's your primary thing. And then of course, you know, little tools that you use um, when you're sculpting. Um, I, one of my um, interests is working with the figure. So when we do figure sculpting, we will be working with clay. Okay. Forming and welding. This is, once again, a broad category, primarily used for industrial um, applications. Um, Generally speaking, you're not going, sculptors, well, okay, let me back up here. Um, there are very few figurative sculptors who work in this medium, okay? But I will show you some processes, and if you go to my website, um, www.adato soda.com um, there's a you'll see a sculpture of a horse and that horse was entirely fabricated 
okay? So formed and welded. And if you look at it, uh, you may not realize that, 